Um, councils might be concerned, Good even if council taxpayers would be pleased. Um, if you freeze council tax, what happens for the councils who need the tax? Well, thanks for asking me that question, Susanna, because it is really important that any policy that Labour put forward is fully costed and fully funded. Uh, it would cost £2.7 billion to freeze council tax for a year, and we would fund that by extending the windfall tax on the huge profits that the oil and gas giants are making at the moment. Um, if we extended that windfall tax, uh, we believe we could raise just over £10 billion uh, this financial year and next. And we would use that money to give a break to people who are really struggling at the moment with the cost of living crisis through freezing their council tax for the year ahead. And if the government sits on its hands and does nothing from Saturday, so in just two days' time, the average council tax is going to go up across the country by 5.1%. That is on top of the um, astronomical increases in uh, uh, the weekly food shop, the doubling in gas and electricity bills from a year ago, and also the £2,000 hit to people who are looking to remortgage yeah. their homes this year. Okay. Well, so there's this no is doubt... just some relief yeah, to the, people that no we would doubt... be able to provide. There's no doubt there's a cost of living crisis and people want to see anything that would keep their bills uh, lower. But did you say you would only do it for a year? So, so then what happens the following year. Well, look, we've set out a fully costed and funded plan for this year to stop this increase happening on Saturday. And, and obviously, we'll put forward plans uh, in the future, including our manifesto on a whole range of, uh, of tax and uh, uh, other issues. But this is an emergency situation we find ourselves in now, Susanna, because the most recent inflation numbers showed that inflation increased in February, uh, it's in double-digit figures, yeah. and no, yet the I'm government just, I'm just interested uh, to know because uh, obviously adding insult that's, to injury. That's fantastic for a year, but are you going to rely then on continuing to milk oil, the oil and gas companies who are making record profits but may not continue to? Are you going to continue with a windfall tax? Because they will then adjust their figures accordingly, won't they, if they're going to have to pay the windfall tax? And you wouldn't well, be able to continue tax... freezing uh, council tax bills. No, and we're not going to make any promises that we can't deliver. The announcement we're making today is a fully costed and fully funded measure. And it will mean instead of a 5% increase to your council tax, it will be frozen. So that monthly fixed cost that people are looking at their bills that have arrived on the doorstep in the last few weeks and thinking, how on earth, on top of everything else, am I going to pay this higher bill as well? And so that's why we've set it out for this year, because we have that money from those astronomical uh, profits. But we've also been setting out how we will permanently reduce people's gas and electricity bills, uh, insulating the 19 million homes in Britain that aren't up to the basic energy performance level. Uh, under the Conservatives, home insulation has fallen by 90%. And we know that probably the biggest fixed cost after your uh, rent or your mortgage is your gas and electricity bill. And those bills are twice the level they were um, a year ago. Uh, and okay. we estimate that through a combination of the insulation programme and Labour's green energy sprint to get to uh, net zero and clean uh, energy, that we could save £1,400 off people's bills, not just for one year, but for years to come. Okay. Uh, Rachel Reeves, let's talk about asylum seekers. You guys at Labour Party have come out with your five-point plan. One of, the, one of those points is to speed up the process. Now, that may well be a very good thing, but that will take some time. In that interim period, while you are speeding up the process, where would you plan to put asylum seekers? The Conservative government are currently are saying are considering ex-army barracks. Is that an option to you? If not, where would you put them? Look, I think it is really important to focus on why we are in this mess, and that's because the claims are just not being processed 
of everyone who arrived here by small boat last year, only 2% of those cases have been processed. 98% of people who arrived last year still have not had their claims processed. That's why the government are now spending more than £6 million a day um, holding people up in hotels. If we could clear that backlog, if we could uh, um, process those um, claims, we could reduce those bills and we wouldn't be having to have I, I this conversation. I understand that, but, but supposedly... Army, Barrett, but, but, but supposedly you've not, you're not really answered the question there for me. I, 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 you know, I accept that what you're going to speed up the process, but do you accept that guess, in that period yeah. you would ha they would it's, have it's to stay premise, in though, hotels? The question that we are... Well, we want to work with local authorities. It's another part of our um, plan that we've set out, as, as you know, Adam, that we want to work with local authorities to try and find cheaper accommodation. But the truth is we are not going to be able to fix this problem unless we sort out the processing. Uh, and also, if we do what Labour's been calling now for months, Yvette Cooper keeps saying this, we should um, prioritise those cases of people who have come here from safe countries, like Albania. We process those claims and we send people okay. home if they have no entitlement can, can to I, be I, here. I, then I, we wouldn't be spending all of this money and having to find more accommodation on top of the £6 million a day that we're already paying out. Just, just a very quick question. Susanna raised the point earlier. Would you allow asylum seekers to go and work? We know there's lots of job shortages across farming, hospitality, okay. uh, lots of industries. Would you allow them to go out and work? No, that would not be my priority. But you process the cases, and if people have got a right to be in here, uh, in this country, then, you know, of course, they should be able to contribute to our economy. But I don't think it would send out a, a good signal uh, um, if we said that you come to this country and you can uh, work straight away without even having your asylum uh, case uh, processed. The most important thing we can do, though, is to actually get through that backlog process those cases, send people home when they have no right to be here. Okay. If they do have a right to be here, to treat them with the compassion and dignity that they deserve. All Rachel right. Reeves, thanks very much indeed. Um, Quentin, Jenny, Thank you. do you sense that uh, Labour have an issue over this issue? With what, with the seekers? asylum? Because, yes. Yeah, they're terrified of it. And why do you think that is? Because the voters disagree with Adil, sorry. And um, the, the, well, the, uh, well, that's also not standing I'm, for Parliament. I'm not standing for Parliament. <laughs> do and you actually, think they, they, they don't. A lot of them don't, you know. Well. Do you think that um, there are voters in constituencies that Labour feel they need to take a different stance that, that, that's, with? That's what seems to that's me... That's what your point is. That seems to me uh, uh, looking at it. But it's interesting, when they talk about council tax, why do they never talk about trying to stop councils wasting money? Our local council has gone bananas about bicycle lanes. They spent millions on it. Uh -huh. uh, uh, it's just a waste of money. And um, but don't if you, you spend want more less, people... then you don't have to raise as don't much. Don't you want more tax. people on bicycles Not in order madly, no. to combat climate change and, yeah. and help air pollution? What, in Hereford? Just walk. Uh, oh, I see, yes, you live in a different part. Of... In London, <laughs> I think people people prefer well, cleaner air. London is not the only air. part of the country, Susanna. No, but it's the only part of the country I live in. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, Quentin, thank you very much. Thank do you want you. to say, Jenny? No, I, I, I just want to say, I think... I think... Anything to say on bicycle lanes? Or, uh, uh... Well, um, you know, I, I live in a very dirty part of London mm. and I'm all for uh, bicycle lanes. Yeah, thank you both very much indeed. Good to talk to you.